Okay, this video is about the center for the self or eye in the brain. It's been discovered recently by the team of Dr. Joseph uh, Paravisi in the Stanford University. In my last video that I'm going to link it below this one, I mentioned that the center for self must have something different than the other parts of the brain. Maybe it's a different type. Maybe according to uh, Roger Penrose, it's not computational like the rest of the brain. For example, its type is completely different. Maybe it is base truth for the brain and then the rest of the brain connect to it to acknowledge the awareness. When you see an object, when you hear something, they connect to the self to acknowledge their awareness. But self doesn't connect to self to acknowledge its awareness, self is a standalone. So that's what I mentioned in my previous video. Now, I did some research and I found this paper that I'm going to show you. Okay, Stanford Medicine Magazine. Here, this has been explained. Joseph Parvizi, this guy, he and his team has found a structure in the brain called anterior precuneus that's in the between the two hemisphere and it has a very complex connection with the rest of the brain now parisi claims that when they disrupt the center the sense of self goes away but what they describe is not exactly the sense of self going away what they say is when they disrupt that region and the person feels everything is unreal if I feel everything is unreal, that doesn't mean that I don't have a self within me that just feels that center makes things real for you. Now, if you disrupt it, you're going to feel like everything is unreal. So that's different than what they describe to be self, I think. Okay, so let's say that precuneus is really the center of the self. I'm calling it self. And we know that it's in, the, in between the two hemispheres. Uh, left and right. Excuse my drawing. So there is a huge connections to the self center. We know that. Um, and um, for everything, the brain has several networks. We have like occipital at the back. We have this medial temporal lobe center for the memories and stuff like that. We have region for auditory stimuli. We have so different networks. Uh, when you see an object, uh, let's say this whole thing is in the skull of a giant and these are the eyes. <laughs> so when we see an object, uh, say this box here, and uh, the photons from this box re reaches to the eye and that goes to the vision center. And uh, in the vision center, it gets processed. But if we are aware of seeing object, it means there must be somewhere in that region a referral to self, right? So everything that we are aware of, they have a referral to self. But we know that there is a self. So self knows that there is a self. And self cannot have a reference to self itself. Why is that? It's because of the issue with self-referencing or initial axioms in the Godel incompleteness theorem. So if self is the truth, everything else can refer to self, but self cannot refer to itself. That is contradictory, at least in our logic, that loop cannot exist. It's contradictory. If self tells refer to self, then when you're referring to self, then it means again refers to self. So there's a never ending loop here that it cannot exist to experience the world. If we want this, we want to experience the world, we have to be able to come from that perception center, go to the self and acknowledge that vision or that hearing of something or the feeling of a smell and things like that. Now, we know that there is a self. So what is that 
awareness of self itself. That awareness of self, when I think we should accept self, is different. It is standalone. I heard a cool example from a monk. He was telling that consciousness is like light. If you want to see the room, you turn on the light. If you want to see the light, itself is enough. So for a dark room, light is needed to experience vision. So here, to experience the world, to hear things, we need the self to exist. But for the self itself, no other thing is required to acknowledge it if it is the base truth or if it is in a standalone entity. So Roger Penrose suggests that consciousness is not computational. It is different than other parts of the brain that are computational and his argument is based on good incompleteness theory. Thank you for watching.